Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the cellar with Marquee Selections to talk about wines that bubble. With me to do that is their managing director, Chris Cribb. Thank you once again for inviting us into your cellar. Sure, Bonnie. Great to be here, and uh, wanted to do a fun subject today. So this is fun. Wines that bubble, and we have to be careful not to call all wines that bubble champagne because that's from a specific area of France. True. Actually, True. we picked a couple wines here today that uh, are not champagne. Are so not champagne. Wanted to show you that there are wines out there that have a little complexity, that have a little bubble or carbonation to them, and uh, they don't have to be champagne. They don't so. have to be champagne. We traditionally think of these wines as dessert wines, celebratory wines. Is, is that what you would suggest as well? You know, I. I'm not going to tell people to not celebrate because I, 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 wouldn't. I, I highly know. encourage it. <laughs> the, um, the time of the year uh, uh, for New Year's is actually the biggest sales time every year. Mm -hmm. um, actually, that and um, for Valentine's Day. Valentine's is, Day. Is another very big time for, uh, for the bubbly. I but, should um, tell you, when we, when we were in the kitchen at Starker's, um, he made his signature dish, which is a fried chicken, and he paired it with a wine that bubbled. Ah. So non-traditional pairings yeah, happen. Absolutely. <laughs> happen. Well, uh, the um, the champagne and a lot of the wines with bubbles are really very very food friendly because they have a lot of acid to them. So that's, um, I, that's probably why John and Starker said that it could stand up to that fried chicken. It did. Yep. It did. So what's our first wine we're talking about? Well, we're going to go first on the, the bubbles to um, mm. to a region in Portugal that okay. is called uh, Vino Verde. And Vino Verde literally means green wine. Mm. And what um, what happens is, is this is at the very north part of Portugal. Mm -hmm. And this is a blend of Trejadura and Alvarinho. Mm -hmm. um, and when they make this wine, it's a table wine. But at the end of the, the process, they put in a little spritz. And okay. so it basically is, a, it's about 11, 10, 11% 11 alcohol mm -hmm. usually. And that, that bubble just makes it so that it tastes a little more like you when you have opened a can of Sprite or something. It's, it'll just attack your really tongue a little does. bit and um, uh, kind of give it a, a, a new nuance to it. Uh, with it being lighter like that, um, mm. Mm. you find that it, that it kind of brightens it up a little bit. It's, it makes it really very versatile for a lot of things that are very hard to pair with. One of the hardest things to pair with um, it, that I've ever found is artichokes. Artichokes, asparagus yes. are both asparagus really, are yep they're really a challenge. Challenge, <laughs> a to, challenge to find something that can stand up to them. The the thing that I like about this uh, vino verde is that because of that little bit of spritz in it there, it actually kind of cleans the palate. It kind of cleans the palate for something a little harder to prepare like that. And there's many conversations. Champagne does need to be served in a special glass. Sure. What are this, we saying? Well, this is first since this is a, just a regular still wine, the yes. Portuguese wine. You know, mm -hmm. we're just looking for a nice light white wine glass that's okay. got got enough of a stem that you can get uh, get some some air to it. Okay. Um, but then, as we, we look at our other wine here okay. that we've got, um, mm. you'll see that uh, this is in a uh, a flute. It's a flute. And so the the flute gives it. It's definitely made for bringing the bubbles out. If you finally, if you kind of look into the the bubbles there, you'll see that. They're coming from the bottom up. Yes. Um, the best wine glasses are made to bring that that up straight out. You'll find some of the the older style wine glasses from Four Champagne that are the flat, wide. Um, Do you want me to tell dipple? you why I was told the original champagne glasses were in that shape? I, I yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> a foodie and not a wine person. Sure, sure. It is supposed to be represent the shape of Marie Antoinette's breasts, which were perfect in shape, and there was a lot of champagne <laughs> <laughs> at their um, palace, and so it was a celebration of her beauty. Uh, I see. But then we started focusing on what we really need to do to deliver the best flavor for champagne, or wines that bubble, and we gone to this shape. Yes. <laughs> it might not look at all like Marie, I, but... I, I like the story, for sure. It's a good story. I know we're, we're going to be talking with Jimmy Franze here in a little bit about mm -hmm. um, about uh, this uh, Bouvet Rosé, 
And, uh, and so where's this from? This is from the Loire Valley. Okay. So we're in France. We're in France. We're in France. So we went to a bubbly in France, which yes. we would be specifically called a sparkling wine. Okay. And um, this is from the Loire Valley, which is a little south of where Champagne's at. And um, the Loire Valley is known for um, the grape type that this is made out of is Cabernet Franc. Because we've got some color here. Yeah, we yes. do. You right. know, when, when you see originally, most champagnes are made from uh, uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Maunier. Mm -hmm. And you, you'll see the difference between those. And this is this has got this bright golden, um, almost a... Um, Oh, almost a peach copper color I would to it. Peach, yes. Yeah, and and uh, that's just because it's a different type of, type of grape. And when we look at other types of grapes and other places, what people are doing, you know, down in Australia, they do sparkling Shiraz. So the, a dark, deep red grape that they make sparkling. A, a real fun thing to try a fun if you've thing never. To try. Never so, had. but would you serve this with dessert? I'm, I would. You, you know, would. I, I think that this would be a great dessert wine. You know, I think that this is. Screaming chocolate covered strawberries to me. Mm. Yeah, um, that's you know. chocolate covered strawberries. That's why it happens on Valentine's Day, too. It's, it would be a yeah. very, very nice thing for um, a number of different types of cakes, pies, that, that, that sort of thing. Tarts. Kind of, yeah, yep, tarts. That would work. So, you know, I know there's theatrics around champagne and France is certainly noted for for that um, I think we should go outside get Jimmy who Let's is the Jimmy. yeah we can get Jimmy he actually you told me he sabers champagne bottles he does he does now we don't suggest necessarily you're doing this at home but Jimmy does it he does it really well he does well a champagne bottle by itself can be a uh, a, something you need to take care of when you're opening because those corks are in there it's such a high pressure right you could put someone's eye out to quote a, uh, a famous movie right okay so maybe we'll go outside and see how to savor it and then we could do a demo in here for how we should be opening champagne at home sounds like a good okay, idea time to go all right okay okay we are outside in front of JJ's with their proprietor Jimmy Francais you have been kind enough to um, give us an example of how to savor a bottle of champagne, but how did we come to be doing this? Well, um, in 1991, yeah. Moet and Chandon brought a club that had been two, that was started 250 years ago in France. Yep. Goes back to Napoleonic times. I see. Supposedly the story is that Napoleon, big champagne nut that he was, they hand his generals a bottle of champagne as they were going out into battle. That's how this they, started, they Napoleon. Pull, they okay. They the sword out, break the top off the bottle, off the bottle, go to battle and die. And die. <laughs> but they have some champagne. We're not doing for, that today. We, we won't. We won't go so, to battle and die. So, so this is a sword that was presented to me by Moe and Chandon. Congratulations. In 1991. Yes. And I've probably done 15,000 bottles. You kind of know how to do this. Well, I hope so. Oh, we hope so, too. <laughs> All right, we are going to give you this bottle of champagne. Stand back and watch how right. sabering happens. All right, it's exciting stuff. Essentially, you break the glass, the top of the glass, and the neck off. It's not a perfect science, so I've seen the car Well, a celebratory drink for mm -hmm. how you opened it and, of course, the wonderful champagne that you all have selected. So, to your health and Bonnie, to life. Thank you. Chris, perfect. Good to see Cheers. you guys. All right, Chris, for those of us who don't have sabers or the skill set to open up a bottle of champagne the way Jimmy just did. Yeah, we all don't have one of those big swords, do I we? I know. Well, here, let me, let me show you. So how should we do this at home? Because this is frequently a, a moment of angst. Sure, sure. What, you take your bottle here. Yes. I usually just take a, a nice napkin, something like this, to cover up the top. What you're going to do is you'll cut around the bottom right through here. You'll open the cage. Okay. And then what you're if you cover you cover it up with the with the napkin. In case and, there's a little explosion. And then you do a half a turn. Okay. And then it'll start to slowly pop out and you just slowly You need to be listening. Yes, it'll, it'll start slowly turn a second half turn should just let it right out. Chris, you've spent a great deal of time searching the globe for these 
unique and extraordinary wines. Thank you, of course, for doing that. You've been recognized by Wine Spectator for the selections that you have made for your portfolio. What's your process? Well, you know, just like um, just like this restaurant that we're in today, J uh, JJ's, we try to put as much as we can into finding the best quality for the money. And um, what we've done is a, a double blind process where we take in everything that uh, we're going to look at. We try to find a unique region that's not overdone in the marketplace. You know, we. Um, the Vino Verde from Portugal. Mm -hmm. People, when they think Portugal, first usually think port. And you certainly don't think a wine that bubbles. Right. No. So that's too, you know, something that's a little bit unique. So we find a unique thing, we focus in on that, and we bring it to all of our customers at a great value for the price. So, all right, so 10 I'm, to $25. Well, that's a great price for fabulous flavor. So I'm I'm going to have a wonderful dinner party. How do I learn about the wines in your portfolio, what they are, where to go find them? Sure. Well, we've got a great website that is uh, www.marquee.com. On that website, we've got uh, wine pairings, so you can look up a little bit about all the different wines we have. We've got a, a phone number, 888-627-7833. Uh, Just give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out. And um, try to do everything we can to, uh, to show you unique wines that are uh, great value. Great value. Well, thank you, and to your health. Cheers. And to life.